I will never spend my Bitcoin right now until it raises to where I think it needs to be. Remember that number, 100 million. I firmly bet my life that not in my lifetime, but maybe in my children's children's lifetime, that one Bitcoin, today that's worth 40,000, is gonna be worth about $100 million. So what do I do? I buy and stack for my kids. You can stack for your future. All right, all right, everyone. Happy momentous Monday. Man, we just got a lot of talk to talk about today. So I just want to welcome you all to KBLA Talk 1580. The name of this show is Ahead of the Crypto Curve, and I am your host, Naja Roberts. And I have my co-host on Mondays here with me. His name is Enrique. Hey, hey. (laughs) Welcome, Enrique. And so uh, we are coming to you today, again, ahead of the crypto curve, where we are creating Satoshi Millionaires, one family at a time, one day at a time, one Bitcoin at a time, one Satoshi at a time. And that, ladies and gentlemen, means you. I am your host, Naja Roberts, a.k.a. Young Harriet, and I am firmly... Firmly standing in it, dragging my feet, making sure this all around in the mud. I am knowing that my mission in life is to lead my people out of financial slavery. And we are here to do just that. Uh, I want to say today, rest in hip hop, as they would say to DJ K Slay, who unfortunately passed away this this uh, today, I'm assuming. Um, And so we just wanted to say uh, to him and his family, we send our condolences uh, for those of us that grew up in that era that helped mold us, Uh, you know, just big ups to him and and his family. And uh, we we, they're in our prayers during this difficult time. So that being said, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we've got a lot going on in the cryptocurrency space. There is so much to know. There is so much to learn and no, you cannot get it all at once. Uh, We've had a couple of comments out there for people that were looking for some of our podcasts that were not listed. We are going to get them on the actual listings. So if you're looking for something in particular uh, that you don't see, please bring it to my attention again by sending an email to ask Roberts at gmail.com. And I will work to make sure that we get those podcasts or that particular podcast up for whatever reason. And a lot of it may have to do with Naja Roberts, because when she leaves the show, she's supposed to put down what the show is about and who was on there. But I have to smile and say, um, sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. And that's a part of my sometimes disease. Uh, sometimes, sometimes, sometimes. So I want to I want to make sure that we are making uh, getting the information to you all as you are requesting and again no fault of the station and most of that has to do with me and me running out of here just trying to make other things happen and make sure that our community is good because it is happening so quickly things are changing so fast uh bills are being implemented uh phone calls are being had and and this thing is bigger than you could have ever imagined And I've got to say this to you over and over and over again so that you all know you're able to take heed and you're able to act accordingly. You are not too late. You are not too late. You are not too late. We are just in the beginning of this thing. Ladies and gentlemen, I am so excited for you. I'm so excited for us. Um, I don't know. I'm always running. I'm like, feel like I'm running around the city because I just want to scream and shake every black and brown person I, I see and say, make sure that you are participating because it's getting bigger than life. I had a phone call earlier this morning uh, with someone that was sharing with me how many millions and millions and millions of dollars are being poured in to the Bitcoin space to help people that are disenfranchised, people that are in communities all across the United States, not necessarily just here in the in um, all across the world, not just here in the United States. And the question became, well, Naja, are you ready to, you know, deal with folks in El Salvador? Because we have opportunities for you in El Salvador. We got 
opportunities for you over in Nigeria in South Africa. They asked me if I had any interest in doing some stuff in India. And I'm like, <laughs> all of that is fine and dandy. But how about right here in this good old United States of America where our community has been last to the market i would look like and i'm not saying that i won't go and help but i will look like an absolute fool in my opinion to be in all these other countries helping all these other people which definitely they need our help but right here in the united states our families and our communities deserve to have this and since i'm here and i live with y'all and i'm in the hood with (laughs) y'all it just makes sense for me to give you this information and it's funny um how other nationalities come in and are like, oh, my God, are you actually doing this? And nobody is at your establishment. Nobody comes to visit. Well, I won't say nobody because we do have clients and customers. But for the most part, people are shocked. So I'm going to tell you all what happened on Friday. We all came into the office there on Manchester in Inglewood here in California. And there was a stench of something burning. So we didn't know whether there was a fire maybe outside that pulled air in. Or if something was in the walls catching on fire. So I called the non-emergency fire department comes out. All of the fire department are are Caucasian guys. (laughs) They're walking through and they're trying to check to see if there's fire in the walls or because they can smell the smell too. But the gist of the story, they didn't find anything. Thank God. They think maybe a wire sizzled or something that we couldn't see. But the gist of this story, ladies and gentlemen, is that these guys stepped back and they were like, You got Bitcoin stuff all over the wall. You got Bitcoin pillows, Bitcoin carpets. Like, what is this? How do we get involved? They were like, not only how do we get involved, like, why in the heck is this community not taking advantage of you being right here with this information? They were just looking like, what in the freak is going on? That's Mm -hmm. that's what they were looking Uh at. And they were like, nobody is like, he was like, this is the biggest news ever. And us from this station are going to get over here and make sure we're buying Bitcoin from you because you're right in our community. And so people need to know that this thing is bigger than probably what you are anticipating or understanding. And we're in the right place at the right time. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, um, we've got a great show for you today. Uh, I'm not sure how we're going to do this announcement. I don't know if I'm going to make my big announcement at the beginning or the middle. I'll probably do it at the middle to help people hang on for a few minutes. But I got a really big announcement that I'm going to share today. We got Enrique in the house. We're going to talk about some things that are happening with his app. For those of you that don't have money to buy Bitcoin and you're looking for a way to sell some things to get some Bitcoin, we got the answer for you. Um, And we're also going to talk about some Bitcoin and some cryptocurrency news that's huge uh, right now in the space. And not just cryptocurrency, ladies and gentlemen, we got to understand that this Bitcoin, this cryptocurrency thing is part of technology. It is technology at its finest. And so we're going to bring more things to you that have to do with technology and you understanding the space. And when we come forward on KBLA Talk 1580, we're going to hear from Enrique. He's going to share an article with us and we're going to have a discussion about it. Thank you. And we will talk to you soon. It is KBLA Talk 1580. All right, and here we are. So, Enrique, share with us the news article, if you can read a little bit about it, and then we can have a conversation. And for those of that of you that want to join in on any of this conversation, feel free to please call 800-920-1580. Again, 800-920-1580, and we would love to talk to you, but we have definitely got a lot to talk about. So, Enrique, what's going on in the article you found? So, Elon Musk actually made two big moves this week. One is he actually tried to buy Twitter, literally, right? So he tried to be one of the majority owners, right? But the board uh, at Twitter basically did a poison pill. They said, okay, if you buy shares, we get to buy them at a quarter of the price. How's that? Wow. Now, Jack Dorsey actually jumped in and said, wait a second. The board actually owns almost no shares. Why are they making decisions like that? He calls it dysfunctional. Hmm. Pretty interesting. Now, the second thing was that you know, Elon Musk lit a, put a literal Easter egg on Sunday shaped like a Dogecoin. So 
the idea is that I think, and this is just my conjecture here, right? He's to, I think that he wants to buy Twitter and set it up as a place for people to make Dogecoin transactions. Mm. He's saying that he wants it to be about, you know, freedom of speech and he doesn't want, you know, because Trump got uh, denied on Twitter. I right? remember that. So he wants to actually make it so that people can say and do whatever they want on Twitter. So he wants to buy it out. But the board doesn't want to let him do that. Mm, that's very interesting. So um, we talk about in this cryptocurrency space, decentralization. Yep. Right. We talk about it all the time. And so I think as everyone begins to really learn what decentralization means in its totality, I think it's a great idea for us to talk about what's not decentralized in this picture. Mm -hmm. um, Twitter, which. Yeah. Just imagine if Twitter was run by a computer. It'd be a whole lot more fair. Yeah, it would be a lot more fair. I've had tons of my comments actually blocked on Twitter. We realized that my algorithm, because I was talking about cryptocurrency when cryptocurrency mm -hmm. was not popular, there's been a lot of social media platforms that have messed with the algorithms. Uh, and not that I want anybody to listen to Elon Musk because he's got some issues in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I have to say freedom with him is freedom with everybody, right? Nope. And so uh, when we look at censorship, censorship and when we look at uh, giving people the opportunity to be um, and say what they want to, whatever they want to, because it's freedom of speech. You know, you have to just treat one like you treat all. And so, um, but I cannot imagine what he would do if he got a hold of Twitter. It would be terrible. I mean, it sounds like he basically wants to make it private because that's the only way he's going to be able to set rules like that. So if he buys it out and makes all the shares private, he can make the rules all he wants. He can make it all he wants. And then we definitely will go into centralization because he will be in control. And if he doesn't like what you're saying, he's going to censor you further than Twitter's already censoring you. Bye-bye. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, we know, ladies and gentlemen, there are a lot of things going on in this technology space, a lot of things that we are not aware of. You have no idea how intertwined a lot of these companies are. Mm -hmm who the owners are, the owners of the same owners. It's the same people just running. Di and I want to say running different games because all of them aren't running games, mm -hmm. but it's so interconnected. And once you get in here and you really start to watch how people move and how they groove, you'll start to say, oh, that's why they had interest in X, Y, Z, because their share owner or their part owner or, you know, they have something to do with these different companies in this technology space. Um, one of the things, too, uh, that I've been watching with both Elon Musk and Jack Dorsey is to really just kind of see what uh, how they would bump heads with stances, because, as you know, Jack Dorsey, ladies and gentlemen that don't know Jack Dorsey, um, he is the owner of Cash App, mm -hmm. but he also has Block and he also has Square, <laughs> right? <laughs> so he's really, really bullish, ladies and gentlemen, on Bitcoin specifically. He's even said it, actually, in some, some – he's actually said it in tweets that he, he does believe in, in Bitcoin and blockchain. He said that. You're right. So my thing, too um, – so Jack Dorsey has all to do with Twitter as well. Oh, yeah. So we got Twitter. We got, we got Cash App, Block, and Square. So this guy has got four huge companies that are household names under his belt, which is why he has a ton of – of a lot of funds and a lot of Bitcoin to give out to disenfranchised communities. And uh, he's doing his part. He is actually putting his money or his Bitcoin where his mouth is and making some things happen. And so my hat goes off to him. This other dude named <laughs> Elon Musk, in my opinion, uh, you know, I don't know that we'll ever be great friends because I just I just see him taking advantage of the black and brown community. Yeah, I just unfortunately, that. just mm -hmm. based on some of the things that he's saying and doing. Um, and, you know, not that Tesla, you Plus know, a little bit of a history. And you know, like his dad was a diamond miner in South Africa. He wasn't self-made. He got a bunch of money from his father who mined uh, rubies and diamond. And we know how they got that together. Yeah, they got that together and cut off the limbs mm -hmm. of those locals so that they couldn't even uh, go in the mines or do anything like that. Like there's a lot of stuff behind a lot of the wealth that happens with the musk 
camp uh, that people don't really know about. And it, it takes getting in this space to really start paying attention. And again, you know, you don't have to be you don't have to be your father's who your father was. You know, a lot of us are not who our fathers were. Apple don't fall far from the tree, but, though. Yeah, they don't <laughs> fall far from the tree. Uh, <laughs> so I'll give, I'll say that as well. But uh, you know, we really want to be careful as we're looking and and people are making empty promises to do things, and it could be that he's still trying to get the juice out of this Doge coin that he wants to get out of it. And any time that you talk to somebody that's new in the Doge coin space, they always talk about what's about to happen like so and so said on social media they're about to start accepting dogecoin here and there well they're about to but they haven't and that's just like gossip on the street Mm -hmm. only to get you to buy in because you think it's going to be the next greatest coin and and it just cannot like there's no way and i think those that are holding the coin that still need a way to sell it Or, you know, Elon Musk made a statement last year that his son was holding Dogecoin. Well, maybe he's trying to make his sons rich. On their own. On their own. (laughs) (laughs) Quote, unquote. (laughs) Quote, unquote, with you buying Dogecoin because he's about to try to buy Twitter and he's about to try to make a payment rail with Dogecoin on there. So we just want to be careful when we uh, deal with these sorts of people in this space. Uh, News is not everything. But news also lets you know why people do what they do. Uh, And I always say, do as they do and not as they say. Uh, Elon Musk's holdings, what they will tell us, because because it's decentralized, they don't have to actually tell us how much Bitcoin they actually own. But I do know that he holds way more than he admits. Uh, And you'll start hearing people say this, too. And I want to make sure that you're clear of why people are saying it. A lot of people say they don't hold Bitcoin and they will contend that they lost it on a boating accident or something happened and they no longer have access to their Bitcoin. It's because Bitcoin has not reached its full potential yet. But when it does, those who know who has what they're going to be looking for those people and people just, you know, people don't want people in their business in this space. It's the complete opposite of what we see in our communities In our communities. When we see people with money, they're having all these rings, gold teeth, diamond teeth. They got, you know, they're jumping out of Bugattis and they're doing all of these things. And in cryptocurrency, there is a few people that, act like that but for the most part those who have massive massive amounts of bitcoin and crypto they are as quiet as church mouse because they invest in assets not liabilities yes and so they're very quiet uh you never know they had two million dollars in their pocket on their cell phone because they come in with holes in their jeans holes in their shoes get out of little cars that look like uh, I saw a guy in a Ghostbuster car during <laughs> Bitcoin Miami, and I thought I was crazy for driving my bug around. But he was in a Ghostbuster car, and he just happened to—he <laughs> had just happened to donate three million dollars to charity. What? And driving around in the car, you never, you look, say, look at that. I gotta start hunting ghosts. Looking at that clown. You would think he was a clown, but that's what they are doing in this space because they know, you know, that it's not about what you look like and what you're driving. Uh, It's about how much money you're actually holding in these digital wallets. Another guy I saw with a meat coat on, it wasn't really a meat coat in Miami. It was 90 degrees he had on this coat. And just just being way out, like, why in the world are you doing that? Because nobody else is doing it. Everybody else has got on tennis shoes and flip flops and shorts. And but and I think that soon our community, uh, those who think that this is about bling, bling, blingish, are going to really figure out. You know, people are being stealth like in this thing and they've got massive money. So if we take nothing else from some of the things that they're doing, uh, we need to be absolutely uh, not quiet. But you need to really know that it's not what you're wearing or what you're driving, but it is all to do with how you move in this space and the creating of change that you can do if you are doing this correctly and you're paying attention to how to store your keys and all the things that matter. Those are the things that matter in this space. Um, 
So that was one of the things that we want. I wanted to share. And there was something that I wanted for you all to listen to. And so I think we have enough time before traffic and news to let you listen in on this because this was really interesting. Um, and I'm going to actually play it and I'm going to put it up and make sure that you all can hear it. Uh, me and Enrique are going to have a talk about this and anybody else that wants to share in this. This is Senator Ted Cruz and he has some stuff to say. And I'm going to make sure that my volume is up loud enough so that you all can hear this. So we need to decentralize. We need to break it apart. It's one of the reasons why I am so bullish on crypto, on Bitcoin, because it is decentralized and not controllable. And let me give a fantastic example. So Justin Trudeau. said, I don't like me some truckers. So we're going to seize your assets. So then the court went to try to seize the crypto that was being given to the truckers. And I don't know how many of y'all saw a letter that I actually want to read from. It's a letter from a company, Bitcoin company called Nunchuck. Here's part of the letter. Dear Ontario Superior Superior Court of Justice, our software is free. We do not collect any user identification information beyond email addresses. We also do not hold any keys. Therefore, we cannot freeze our users' accounts. Wow. We cannot prevent them from being moved we do not have the knowledge of quote the existence nature value and location of our users assets this is by design please look up how self-custody and private keys work when the canadian dollar becomes worthless we will be here to serve you too. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, when I heard that, I was just ecstatic. I just, it, it's just, it's, it's really good to, to start to learn what decentralization means. Um, because when someone doesn't like what you're doing or saying, be it right or wrong, they have no ability to stop it. And so just so you all understand the history of that, the Canadian government sent a letter out to all the cryptocurrency exchanges and said, seize funds, stop these individuals from sending money to these truckers not that the truckers were right or wrong i'm not talking about that it's just the principle behind freedom of speech Mm. and so that was the letter and when i heard that coming from ted cruz i just was tickled because he's actually reading a real letter that they wrote to the canadian government to tell them that they there's just no way they cannot do it. They're not. And they're telling them to research what it looks like. And then that last part, when the Canadian dollar <laughs> seeks to have any type of relevance, relevance will be here for you too. So that was, that was good. And so things like that, ladies and gentlemen are happening all around the world. So again, when we say that you're at the beginning, we're at the beginning, just think about, Ten years from now, you're going to remember that letter being read on this show and be like, oh, my goodness. I remember when the these these governments were going after these exchanges and saying, hey, stop this. And there was no way to do it. Uh, But with that, ladies and gentlemen, we are running up against traffic and news. And when we come forward, we're going to get into what we're going to talk about today. And that is Bitcoin loans. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, this is KBLA Talk 1580. All right. All right. We are here. I thought we were uh, we were grooving. (laughs) Oh, it's okay. It's okay. No worries. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So today we are talking about Bitcoin loans. And so let me kind of help you understand uh, what Bitcoin loans and what Bitcoin lending is all about. 
So, you know, now one of the biggest conversations across the United States is the fact that our grandparents are passing on, our parents are passing on, and everybody is selling the properties, right? People are selling the properties. And because they're selling the properties, either because they don't feel like they want to keep up with the taxes or maybe too much confusion in the family, whatever the reason, Big Mama's house is getting sold. Uh, And that's happening all across the United States, which is causing some of the gentrification because when people are wanting to sell these properties, they want top dollars and they really don't care who buys the house as long as they get the money that they're going to be able to split up and really not knowing or realizing that they'll never ever be able to get back into that particular asset in that particular neighborhood again because the prices are skyrocketing. And so there's so many other options out there that our community could utilize as opposed to selling Big Mama's house. But today we're talking about why you shouldn't sell Big Mama's Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's my co- that's that's my, my new term. Um, I've been using it a lot lately because my kids and my grandkids better not sell Big Mama's Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to teach them how to leverage their Bitcoin just like you would leverage a house. Now, please make sure you're understanding that Bitcoin is considered property. Real estate is considered property. So we can kind of make them equal in thought just so you can understand what you need to do and how you need to do it in order to get this thing done. So, again, I go back to the fact that we want our community to never sell their Bitcoin. Well, what if there's an emergency? What if you need to take some of the monies that you put into Bitcoin back to pay maybe a bill in an emergency or something that needs to be done. Well, you can take out a loan. There are several companies out there that will give you a loan on your property, be it the, it's the Bitcoin. Um, and so um, we want to share that information because there's a right way to do this and there's a wrong way to do this. Uh, First of all, if you're just taking a loan out against your Bitcoin or your asset just because you want something and don't necessarily need it, I think that's a bad idea. Uh, But a lot of people are asking at the start of this, what if I need money? How do I liquidate it? It is easy to liquidate. All you do if, if you bought some Bitcoin is the same exact platform that you bought it from. Nine times out of 10, you can sell it back to that platform because these platforms are liquid. We do have the monies uh, to, to purchase Bitcoin from you if you wanted to sell it. But we're asking you and urging you not providing any financial advice. Let me keep saying that over and over again. But I guess I am providing financial advice. We don't want you to sell your Bitcoin because it has not yet reached its full potential. With that being said, though, ladies and gentlemen, we want to make sure that you go to a lending company that is going to work in your favor. There's lots of companies out there that are doing Bitcoin loans, uh, but we don't want it to be like the payday loan situation. 30% interest. Oh, my goodness, that we've fallen into in the past. We want to make sure that we're safe. Uh, We found a couple that we feel safe with. I know I have. I know um, Enrique was doing a little bit of research, and we're going to talk about what it actually looks like. I'm not going to go into the rates uh, because for the most part, I just kind of want you to know how it exists and how it works. And then maybe what we'll do is make sure that we give you some links on um, at a later date where you can go in and really look at some of these platforms for yourself. But the biggest thing that we want you to do is do your due diligence. No matter what we're sharing with you today, you need to do your due diligence. So I have a real story, a real true story um, about one of my children that took a loan against their Bitcoin. So I had my son, my oldest son uh, is 20. He's 28. um, And what he decided to do was take a loan against an entire Bitcoin. Uh, He did that. When did he do that? Oh, my goodness. I don't even want to say It's the date that matters. Let's be honest. He did it in May of 2021. And if you're looking at at that date, uh, Bitcoin was in its 40s. It was like around 40-something. What's around 40-something now? Well, it was 40-something. But as soon as he got a loan out on his Bitcoin, 
the price of Bitcoin started to drop. And ladies and gentlemen, these loans have to be kept up, meaning you have to maintain the loan to value ratio. They're collateralized, right? They're collateralized. So when he took this loan out for his Bitcoin, and he did it for good reasons, he wanted to build his own app. And he had an app that he's doing. He's still building, unfortunately, uh, because it didn't work out the way that he thought it would work out. But um, he had to take a loan out for it on his Bitcoin. He talked to me about doing it. And I said, no, I don't want you to do it. It's, it's really risky. You don't want to do it. You don't want to do it. And he said, I got this. I got this. This is going to be fine, Mom. I'm going to get this, take this loan. I'm going to pay the loan back and I'm going to get my full Bitcoin back. And so. Put his he put his paperwork in to get do his loan. They accepted it. Mm-hmm. So they had uh the way that it had to be done was he had to then send him his their Bitcoin. So he had to physically go into his ledger device, which is cold storage, and send them an entire Bitcoin. Mm-hmm. Once he sent them the Bitcoin, uh because it's on a smart contract, ladies and gentlemen. So a smart contract provides a if then situation. If the Bitcoin is there, then the money is released. So the Bitcoin was there. Then the money was released. It went straight into his bank account. He had money to pay his developers, and he started paying his developers. Well, the price of Bitcoin started to slip. And when it started to slip, he was getting emails that in order to maintain his loan to value for his collateral, he needed to put $300 in. That was the first email. Then the next email was he needed to put $1,500 in. He put $1,500 in. So he was kind of taking part of that Bitcoin money that he got the first and putting it in to pay. Putting it back to pay to keep his loan to value ratio in place. And then after the second infusion of money back into the loan bitcoin was still dropping and he called me and he was like i need some help because i'm about to lose my bitcoin and i'm like well how much do you need and he's like i need i think at that time was like 400 bucks so i was like okay here's a 400 dollars. you better give me my money back and then bitcoin slipped some more and ladies and gentlemen i was like there is no way we're gonna keep putting money it back into to holding on Chasing to your good money after bad, yeah, right? It was just a bad situation. And unfortunately, he lost his whole entire Bitcoin, like one full Bitcoin he lost. Uh, and I'll tell you all another day how he acquired it because he didn't actually buy it by it, but he did some trading and some other things to acquire that one full Bitcoin. Um, but he lost his Bitcoin in that lending situation, but he still did have the cash or some of the cash that he initially had taken out uh, the loan against for the Bitcoin. He still had you know, was able to pay some of his developers to do some of the things, but that's the price of taking out a loan. And that's just like anything. You take a loan out, um, you know, if you go to the pawn shop Mm -hmm. and you pawn something, I don't know, well, the value doesn't change like that because most of the time it's a uh, a static uh, commodity, like a piece of gold or a piece of jewelry or Mm -hmm. just something like that. So it doesn't fluctuate in price. But Bitcoin does fluctuate. So uh, the flip side of that, had Bitcoin not gone down and he not took the loss in price, if Bitcoin had gone up, ladies and gentlemen, he would not even have had a loan to pay back. It would have started paying off the interest and and all those things for him. So if Bitcoin had went the opposite direction, that's the flip side of this, he would have been all good. It would have taken care of all his payments. Uh, It would have been repaying the loan and all those things because the price would have increased. So when you're taking out these loans, you do need to know that there is a difference. Uh, And this particular company was a company where he had to give them his Bitcoin. But when we come forward in a few seconds, we're going to talk about platforms that do not require you to give over your Bitcoin. But there's a lot of drama behind that. So this is KBLA Talk 1580. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're here. We're on this break. We were talking about my son. Like every time mm-hmm. I think about it, I feel so sad. But uh, Enrique, we're talking. What were you saying, Enrique? You know, it's just you got to really look at it like tuition. You know, we're we're learning. We're you, you got to take that time to go. Okay, I'm paying this money so that I can learn. Because I'm I'm telling you, I myself have also lost more than one Bitcoin on whatever it was that I thought was more important at that moment. 
than actually keeping these Bitcoins. Now, it's funny because a year later, of course, I wish I had kept the Bitcoin and not, <laughs> and not spent it on that, you know? Yeah. Uh, but at that time, that was the belief, right? Yeah. And it's more common than you think. A lot of us in this space can tell this story. It's actually more common that we tell this story than the opposite, where you say, oh, yeah, I've been saving this since day one. Yeah, because it's definitely not the case. And as Enrique said, we have paid our tuition. I got my master. Well, I got my doctorate's degree <laughs> in crypto for the tuition I paid on the coins lost and in the lessons learned. So what we are doing is hoping that we can impart upon you our knowledge so that you don't have to go down the same path because we've already paid tuition for you. We just want you to kind of skate through here on the, on our heels and just really enjoy this space as it is. And so, um, we uh got about we got a couple of minutes before we come up with uh some some commercials, but we want uh Enrique, can you share with us? So one there's, of the sites there's one found? company that I've found. Now, you know, obviously I am not giving financial advice, okay? Mm -hmm. But this company is called Salt Exactly like Salt, SaltLending.com. Now, they actually let you do uncollateralized Bitcoin loans. Now, <laughs> there's been a lot of controversies, right? Because, I mean, if I lose my money, I'm not going to give you my money, right? <laughs> yeah. So, we were just having that conversation. I said, and my son would have been the one that said, what? Bitcoin lost his value? I'm not giving you my keys. Let like, me know how it goes. Catch me when you catch me, right? He would have been a, he would have been one of those. But, yeah, so how, how do you think that could play in, though, good? Because people are able to hold on to their Bitcoin. I would imagine it's got to be contractual. There's got to be some kind of credit system or some kind of contractual way that you can say, hey, if I give you this amount of Bitcoin or if I give you, if I sign off on this and I got X amount of credit, will you please give me X amount? I don't imagine that they're just going to cut you a check for, you know, half a million dollars just because you got a few Bitcoins that you say you got and they can just see the wallet. Right. You yeah, know. there has to be something to show, you know, that you have ownership and things like that. And they've thought through this all the way. So, you know, we don't have to do any um, we don't have to do any trying to figure it out for them. There are so many companies that are already doing this. And the bottom line is they're going to be doing what's best for them, mm -hmm. what's best for their company. And so one of the well, I'm going to say one of two that I am looking to rock with at our Bitcoin banks across this United States. One of them is Celsius. Uh, Celsius is a platform. You do have to give them your private keys. They do hold your Bitcoin. But Celsius is one that we're, we're working on getting some sort of um, collaboration with. And one of the other ones that you don't have to give your Bitcoin to is Unchained Capital. Mm. Um, and so people have some good things to say about Unchained Capital. I'm not quite sure all the way on any of them, but I know that as this space grows, as we grow, uh, we're going to start to learn more about how to own this asset called Bitcoin, which, again, they list as property, but I call it an asset, how we're going to be able to own this asset called Bitcoin and this asset actually work in our favor by us not having to sell it, but for us to be able to leverage it. There's some leverage to be had with this Bitcoin thing. In fact, um, in fact, there was when we come forward, we're going to just really briefly touch on the individual who got a loan for his Bitcoin and went out and bought more while the price of Bitcoin was low. So we'll talk about him when we come forward. This is KBLA Talk 1580. All right. So you all can do a little bit of um, taking a look at this while you are on your break, kind of like homework. There's a gentleman by the name of Michael Saylor of MicroStrategy, and he took out a two point two hundred and five million. I was going to say two point five, two hundred and five million dollar loan on his Bitcoin to go and buy more Bitcoin. Wow. So incredible, incredible yeah. strategy. So you can look into that and see what that's all about. But with that, we have uh, Enrique here, and he's going to talk about Binks and yes. how you can earn you some Bitcoin without having to buy it. If you don't have any money, listen close. So if you got any unused items sitting around the house, right, you can sell those for Bitcoin. You're not listening to, to uh, maybe that stereo anymore, maybe that iPod. You might want to sell it. So go to Binks.com. That's B-I-N-K-X.com. 
click on sign up and post your stuff for sale for Bitcoin. All right. All right. And we are rocking with that. And ladies and gentlemen, as you all know, we do a daily dollar cost average. So for those of you that cannot dollar cost average, you need to be going to Binks, B-I-N-K-X dot com. So you can go ahead and sell some of your things for Bitcoin and get some Bitcoin, stack some Satoshis. Satoshis being the smallest increment of a Bitcoin. But it is that time today that we are going to dollar cost average. And you know what I say, a DCA a day keeps poverty away and so with that we are going to stack our satoshis by dca which is dollar cost averaging we're going to do so on the black wall street wallet so all you're going to do is open up your cell phone you're going to download the black wall street wallet app either on your android or your apple phone hopefully you've already done that we're going to click on the purple circle that has the two arrows at the bottom that says uh, it doesn't say anything. The two arrows are back and forth. Sorry about that. And then you're going to click on buy Bitcoin. Then you're going to click one time. And you, I am going to dollar cost average six dollars a day, which, again, is going to keep poverty away from me. And we're going to hit continue. It's going to show us how much Bitcoin is trading for right now, which is forty thousand six hundred and fifty three dollars. Uh, but again, we're just buying us some Satoshi's, the smallest increment of a Bitcoin. And voila, we have dollar cost average our Bitcoin for the day. So, ladies and gentlemen, do not touch that dial. We are going to make way for the D.L. Hughley show. And you all know that D.L is the truth so listen in see what he has to say is some good stuff coming up uh we are just excited that you came to join us today on ahead of the crypto curve my name is Naja roberts aka young harriet and his name is enrique almeida all right all right ladies and gentlemen we can be followed on social media you can look for me on social media i'm Naja roberts everywhere and i had a great announcement ladies and gentlemen i forgot my book drops pre orders on my book you can go to Naja roberts.com naja roberts.com and you can pre-order your book today i'm this going is, on right now hold on this <laughs> is kbla talk 1580